Our first presentation is by James Watson from Tradition. He has been the global head of sales for Tradition Market Data Group uh, for quite a few years. With over 30 years experience in the financial industry, he has held senior roles across a wide range of companies, most recently as CEO of ADS Securities in London. James will talk to us about life after and during COVID. James, the virtual floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I'm assuming I everyone can see me. This is a new experience for me. I'd like to thank, um, first of all, if I may, Ben for his opening speech. It's good to know what else they're doing. And it's lovely to welcome them into the Spotify Netflix world, somewhere great place to start. Um, today, I'm going to take a little bit of a journey down the lane. Sorry. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of a journey down the um, the COVID, as I like to call it, the COVID lane, and ask the question, was it business as usual? And this is sort of a sales story of what happened to us and what we faced, and hopefully will resonate and start the morning off a little bit easier before we get into the really meaty topics. So <clears throat> we all plunged into this global lockdown together. And <clears throat> when I sat and spoke about this, I thought, let's look at the Let's look at a little journey. What was the start of it? What did we do? What were the challenges? What did we learn from it? And what conclusions can we take away? So my goal today is to really share that with you and hopefully give you some ideas as to how we may have moved forward. So <clears throat> I expect the first question is a rhetoric question. In the beginning, what did you do? You know, did you down tools? Did you create a plan? Some people put their head in the sand. Have you reset your goals? What did you learn from it? I expect the big point that um, comes home to me is that we were quite surprised when we spoke to many clients about how it went from zero to 100 miles an hour of nothing. And it, it was like everybody just stopped. So I wanted to look back at that because some people are still not even back at work. Some people are struggling with the whole concept and also the, the whole paradigm of working from home change. So there was a lot to consider. So what did we do? Well, the first thing I did personally was panic thinking, how am I going to make my targets? How are we going to make our targets? What are we going to do with our people? And after you get through that initial stage of good, good, good Lord, how are we going to do this? The next natural thing, of course, was to then say, okay, let's sit back, listen to what the company's telling us. What are they telling us? And the first thing, of course, was to follow all the rules, work out how we were going to deal with it, follow the government rules, plan for internal communication, then have an ongoing plan for that, and then all leading up to how we get back to work. So it was about listening to what our company did. The next thing we did, of course, was we sat down and looked at this and said, how do we make sure that we don't lose our business? How do we ensure that our management will have the confidence in us to do it? What about our customers? How are we going to measure ourselves against our performance uh, on the pandemic? And then how are we going to deal with the unknowns? And then lastly, but not least, is how do we get to that all important, the future? What do we look like? So sat down and the best analogy I could think about this was that in a sales world that we live in, our teams were suddenly scattered. It's a bit like taking Bayern Munich and saying to Bayern Munich, that um, that I put the, the the forwards on one football pitch. I put the defenders on another football pitch. I put the goalkeeper on another pitch. So we became very scattered as a team. And so we sat down and said, okay, how do we get around this? And the first thing was to make sure that the message coming from the top about how we were going to manage our business was really important. The next thing, of course, was to then work out how we're going to work from home. How are we going to connect? What goals? What's the information sharing? How are we going to keep in touch with our people? And then once we'd sorted that out, we could then look at the external challenges. What does this mean for the customers? How are we going to talk to them? How do they want us to talk to them? So I thought what I'd do is run through some of these. As we got ready, we decided that this was no time for perceptions, no time for ideas that didn't make sense. So therefore, the next thing we did was we decided to have a more gentle uh, approach. We wanted to set the theme, outline this plan, set certain expectations. And so this is what we did. 
right at the beginning, I mentioned providing the management message. That's both up and down. Really important for us to have regular management meetings, really important for us to have clear KPIs at a management level. So that included me, my bosses. But then the next thing we had to do was to go to our staff and say, right, the management have the confidence in you and our collective abilities to come up with answers for this. You still need to meet your business goals. You still need to respect and own all of the goals that you are, you've you owned because we're in this together. We're going to have to work out how to fight it together. So number two was working from home. Boy, think about it. Suddenly you have children at home. You're sitting in a bedroom. You've got toys. You have phones ringing. You have dogs barking. The whole thing changed and it took a little bit of time. What did our people need? What did they need technology wise? You know, was it two screens, one screen? Internet wasn't good enough. So we we had all of these challenges to face. So we addressed them because if we had our people in a place where they could conduct their business, and we also needed to give people time to adjust to that. Another big thing we decided that we had to keep connected and we wanted to have fun. Um, every We had meetings every single morning at eight o'clock. And then every Friday we had drinks. And as you can see from some of the photos, we had fancy dress evenings, but we wanted to create focus habit. We had a level of consistency, some strong communication, which led to ideas. And this was a massive point. And we did this globally. So this was important for us. Next was goals and expectations. As I mentioned before, we talked about KPIs. And on the KPIs, we needed to make sure that they were at every single level, individual, People had to know I had KPIs. And so we aligned everything very clearly. Because we were scattered, we had to be clear in that point. And then we kept going back to people about how we were performing individually, regionally, and more importantly, company-wise. That was just not only about making business, but also how we were doing this. So open communication at all times. And we sort of took this mantra that the team that works together will win together. And we felt that was quite an important thing to do which then led us to the information and learning. So for us, we use salesforce.com. And it's been, as anybody who uses salesforce.com will know, there are good users of it and there are poor users of it. We had to bring that median up because now this was the major way that we were going to communicate with each other. We already had meeting notes that are circulated on every deal, but on every discussion. But now we had to take them up a level because now we had to feed information into our planning, forecasting. We had to feed information into our product people. We had to learn new skills the quality of the data had to go up because now we were depending on this system that sat in the middle. We looked at new practices. We took our pricing sheets, put them into Salesforce. We, um, we updated customer information and we made sure that everything we had allowed us to have strong pipelines and a flow of data up and down through the organization. This meant discipline and consistency. Now, what I mean by this is very interesting. When we first started, um, the reason we had the early morning meetings at 8.30 every morning was because we felt that we had to create an environment where people still showed up for work. At the beginning, people didn't put cameras on. And when we even speak to clients today, people don't put cameras on. That makes no sense. If I'm doing a sales job of supporting a client, it seems crazy that the reason I'm not putting a camera on is because my hair doesn't look good or I, have, I, I haven't been in the mood today. It's still work. So we had to do things in that way. So be ready. That was the big message. Be disciplined. Get up in the morning. Follow your routine. And you might have to adjust that routine, but create one. Doing the job right the first time, because when you're in the office, you can get around things. But when you're at home and when you're doing everything over electronic medium, it's how you write things. It's the message you send. So be prepared. Still make the phone calls to your clients. Get organized in how you're going to do the follow up and then use the resources that have changed. They've gone from in the office, walk around the corner, talk to somebody to I need to work out how I'm going to get the information. So whether it's Zoom or whatever. This led to something else that I felt was really important, and our human resources department spent a lot of time talking about this, was making sure we keep in touch. I think in German they call it laissez communiquer, which is all about casual 
conversations, making sure people were dealing with things okay. The pressures changed. Get, you know, everybody's stuck in the house. Could you go out? The message from the governments was for a period there very um, discombobulated. So we just kept on leaning out to make sure that our people were okay. Same as you might pull somebody for a coffee at work, we now had to do this online. So we handled the internal charges, but now we looked at external. One of the big questions we asked is, how are our clients going to do business? And one of the major issues we ran into straight away <clears throat> was that everybody was using different systems. So if I'm talking to AWS, I needed to do it on Chimes. UBS, Skype, just to pick one of them. If you talk to um, Refinitiv or LSEC, as it's now known, you have to use Teams. And what happened was this became very difficult because in a world where we live in a compliance controlled broking environment, there are lots of compliance issues as to what you can see and what you can't see. So it's taken time for us to um, create the environment where we could get access to all of these tools. And our IT department have been working solidly to ensure that they can achieve this. But as you can see, it, it's changed things. This also led into the question of, what will it be for the hybrid of the future? Are these are these communication methodologies going to exist? The answers are resounding yes. So we've got to find the balance. And also, did we know the plans for the comeback of the clients? So when are the clients coming back in the office? Are they going to allow face-to-face uh, -face meetings? If they do, will they be outside? Will they be inside? Will In the UK, they're talking that social distancing will end on June the 21st. And they also say that pigs will start flying in the same week. But if it does happen, what, what does that mean for our clients? Because it's going to change the world. The other thing is customer management. How are we going to manage the customer? How are we going to follow up? How does the customer want to be managed? At the, uh, when you're dealing with a customer, you can talk to very many points. Now in the electronic world, then a lot of the people are at home. How do you get to them? So the casual relationships that happened in a, in a, for a coffee or in an office or for a meeting, these changed dramatically and we needed to know how to do that. So we spent a lot of time working on understanding the client's perspective. What do you want from us? How are we going to deliver to you? And also, what are the processes? How do we do how do we do contracts now? Everything, for example, for me has changed from a physical contract. I now sign PDFs. So I've been set up for that. Do we, is this the way it's going to be? Do we have an opportunity now to go fully online and really start to automate everything? You know, and what will be the blockers to that? Should all proposals be electronic, which then gives us a full audit train? So customer processes and whether we can clear the hurdles of legal and all of these things, now we have an opportunity to do it and we should take advantage of it. Um, so this led me to the this slide here, which was my best practices. And I wanted to see what worked and what didn't. The yellow box is very much for us. So on customer interactions, we find, you know, what worked was the use of technology. Um, what we didn't, what didn't work is the lack of consistency and the, gift, the difficulty with our internal systems to connect to all of these. I would say we're now sitting at a seven out of 10 um, on, on this, but we are looking to improve all the time and working with our IT departments. Um, the business management, I think this worked well through KPI management. Technology setup. We got up and running quickly, but it was very difficult in the early beginning for the setup. So, for example, I have a team in Madrid. They went home and they had literally no, they had to be on their kitchen table and they had a single screen PC. That didn't work. We then had to work out how to get double screen. So that took a bit of time. But you also have to remember, we had over 500 brokers who needed to work in real time. So there was just a time lag on this. And maybe it's a lesson for the future. Our people the connection was very good. And the effectiveness that's come out of that is we're on target. That's not to put a thumbs up on what we're doing, but it's an absolute testament to, to the people in our team and the support people around our team because we got focused very quickly and we adapted. So let's talk about the future in green. 
our customer interactions, you know, we think there's going to be a greater expansive use of technology in the day to day, which will augment travel. My concern is that people still buy from people. We still need to meet people and trust people because the world is about trusted partners. In the business processes, I mentioned that earlier, should we become more automated? Well, how are the lawyers going to feel about that? How are compliance going to feel about that? How are the blockers, the people who don't like technology, going to feel? Working from home, as we know, there was a massive distrust on working from home in the past. Um, have we proven that to be something that works? If you're in sales and you travel, you're used to being on the road, being a warrior, working from um, coffee shops, etc. cetera. Um, now, how do we do that? Do we even need our salespeople in the office? Well, I think we do. And again, the reason is, is because my concern would be, are we creating um, – silos of people, people not connected? What about all the ad hoc conversations in the office, overhearing things that you can add to your narrative? What about new people we bring in? What happens to them? How do we train them? How do we absorb them into the team? We can't expect people to be sitting at home their whole lives. So therefore, that led me to making sure that our practices and our plans better match the new world. And then last but not least is, of course, listening. Making use of communication, being able to read what's not being said in an electronic communication can be difficult. So we have to become better, you know, and my concern again, there is people, can, it, can they adapt to this? So what have we learned? Leadership is important right at the beginning. Clear messaging, extremely important, again, from the beginning. Focused approach to how we're going to do our business and drive our business. Really important that we give people those goals and that we allow them to grow into it. We have to remain connected. No matter what, we, we, we found this to be such an important thing. Talk to people. And the chat in that, we use Zoom. And the chat in Zoom is a great place for us because it's allowed you know, humor, and it's allowed banter, and it's allowed connectivity, sharing, requesting in, in live time. We also understood that some people took longer to adapt, and we needed to accept that, but not pander to it. Okay, you have children at home, we get it. You have a partner, we get it. You have to work out those timings and make sure it happens. Or, you know, you're stuck at home and you can't concentrate. How do you do that? You need time. You know, and we had lots of discussions over this. We also had to accept that people are going to go up and down with their moods based on the fact that it's very difficult to move from the environment we were to where we were. So accept fluctuating performance. And then also understand that our people are really resilient. You know, we learned that, that um, our team in particular, and now talking to others across the, the market, you know, it, it's great how very quickly we went from very discombobulated approach to now people just generally talk to each other. Hey, have you got a sec? Let's jump on Zoom. Um, you know, one thing I didn't put on here is the turning on of cameras. I think it needs to happen. If you're not turning on a camera, what message are you sending? You're not ready. You don't care. Oh, I, you know, I, I think this is something that really is important to me. And I think that it's something that's got to become important to all of us. So as we get towards the end of this, and I think I'm sort of on time, conclusions. We didn't panic at the beginning. And I'm sure you didn't panic as well. And by setting out a clear plan for success, and this applies to everything we do in our business, we also found out that having the right people is really important. Uh, it's the key to success. Some people really struggled. And I, the, the thing I found the most interesting, and it didn't happen in our company, but I've seen it happen, people couldn't make it in, but they were quite happy to post on Instagram. They were quite happy to post on Facebook that, you know, or people didn't want to mix. They wanted to be socially distanced. And then you have pictures of their barbecues from the weekend where there's 20 or 30 people. So I think having the right people wasn't just about selling and doing our business. It was about adhering to the whole concept of what we were trying to achieve and being ready. Access to data, both internal and external. We've really come to depend on our CRM system and the salespeople and the support people have been really strong in finding adapt and helping us through, you know, moving that, um, that needle forward. 
also being an under you know we've we've we need that to be a understanding and flexible employer without losing sight of our business requirements extremely important and, and that we understand that and we have to be more flexible as an organization again setting the goals which was you know i can't stress enough giving people a reason to be there and a reason to achieve and then also having the infrastructure to support the business paradigm so that's all about the it it's about hr it's about mental health it's all of those things to support people um i'm a big thing on this the humor is really important you know everything we do to keep some fun in the business make sure we connected um and again regular updates try and create normality out of the electronic world which can be difficult in its own right and then you know we know we'll need to reset expectations once normality returns um, as of two weeks ago we had our whole team in in london and the difference is unbelievable people talking listening laughing people getting back to some level of contact you know humans are what we are what we are we like to be connected and so this is a really important thing for me to stress is that reset expectations but get people back if your organization is, is doing the job properly and our facilities and hr have done an amazing job to, to do this we have strict rules about what we do but people respect those rules so as I conclude, I'm asking that question, are you ready for the future? Because we are ready and we're ready to welcome you to what we have. And so if there's any questions, if not, please come and join Jamie and Glaxton who are manning our booth. And with that, um, uh, EJ, I hand it back to you. Thanks very much, James. Uh, that was a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, and you said many things that all of us can relate to and have had same, similar experiences, I suppose. Again, great insights and also reassuring to hear and see that, uh, that you have gone through similar cycles of, of, uh, of, of, of the process of COVID and what it all meant to all of us. There's a couple of interesting questions because there is some time for it. Um, one question, James, was did you see in the adaptation and in the sort of the, the whole process of trans transition a difference between let's say the older generation and the younger generation um yeah i i, I would think there would one is you can make the assumption that the older generation and, and i am generalizing here so for anybody in the who class themselves the younger generation there were more responsibilities so for example in my situation my three children came home and at the ages of 23, 20, and uh, at the time 14, putting two of them were living away. So pulling them back together, that was difficult because we had to, you know, reestablish all the home relationships. So I, I think from an older perspective, there were a different set. I think the, the young ones on the technology moved really quickly, really, really quickly putting people at home and saying, you've got to do everything now on Zoom and everything in that way. So I, I probably think it was a, there was a mix of both. I don't think there was a particular bent towards the others. And the other thing that was really impressive is that our team helped each other, EJ. You know, if, if I was, I mean, I'm 61. I, I know it's genetically perfect. I agree. Um, but, you know, I struggled with some of the stuff and some of our people helped me through that. Oh, no, do this, do that. And I, I think it's been really good. The biggest problem was on the CRM system because, you know, some people are a bit slower on that. They had to adapt and adapt quickly. And maybe some of those who are from this slightly older generation struggled a bit more with that. Yeah. Sounds very uh, familiar, James. Um, <laughs> on the panel discussion that we will have in about half an hour, uh, we will also talk more about uh, transition to COVID, but then probably more from a technical, infrastructural point of view and how vendors have had to adapt. For now, I would like to uh, thank James. Again, very interesting. Thank you for your presentation.